since I became lead pastor at Heights, one of the things that people have noticed that I've done a little bit more of was I went out and bought some really nice colored collared shirts and been wearing them a little bit more during our Sunday services. And, and to be honest with you, some people have commented and talked to me and said, hey, uh, we like the way that you're looking like that. It's like you're looking the part right? That you're finally looking like you're a pastor of the church. And when I hear comments like that, the sinful side of me, you know, I know they mean that as a compliment, but the sinful side of me wants to just dress back down in t-shirts and blue jeans uh, and continue to do my messages from there. Because I believe that it's more important that I'm acting the part than looking a part. However, when we look at our continued study here in the book of Exodus, we see that the high priest is given garments to look the part that God has called him to, to be in. And the reason why is because he is a representation of the true high priest, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who is a representation of someone who's going to take uh, upon himself uh, the ministry of the high priest and absolve us of sin through his sacrifice. And so what we see through the garments that are being placed upon the high priest is a representation of Jesus and very important in the ministry of Israel. And that's what we're going to get into today as we continue our study in the book of Exodus. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. You can receive a devotional much like this one where we read just a little bit of the Scripture together and pull one thing from it to be more like Jesus. Well, as I said, you know, we're going to be looking at this chapter all about the priest garments because the garments of the priest were to be used to signify to the people of Israel that this person was different, his ministry was different, and the garments reflected the ministry that God wanted him to have before the people of Israel. Let's take a look at that together. Then bring near you to you Aaron, your brother, and his sons with him from among the people of Israel to serve me as priests. Aaron and Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. You shall speak to all the skillful whom I have filled with the spirit of skill, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him for my priesthood. These are the garments that they shall make, a breastpiece, an ephod, a robe, a coat of, a coat of checkerwork, a turban, and a sash. They shall, be make, they shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, and his sons to serve me as priests. They shall receive gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linen. And they shall make the ephod of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet yarns, and of fine twined linen, skillfully worked. It shall have two shoulder pieces attached to its two edges, so that it may be joined together. And the skillfully woven band on it shall be made like it and be of one piece with it of gold blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen you shall take two oinic stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of israel six of their names on the one stone and the names of the remaining six on the other stone in the order of their birth as a jeweler engraves signets so shall you engrave the two stones with the names of the sons of israel you shall enclose them in settings of gold figlery, and you shall set the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as stones of remembrance for the, uh, for the sons of Israel. And Aaron shall bear the names before the Lord on his two shoulders for remembrance. You shall make the settings of gold figlery and two chains of pure gold twisted like cords, and you shall attach the corded chains to the settings. You shall make a breastpiece of judgment in skilled work. In the style of the ephod you shall make it, of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet yarns, and fine twine linen shall you make it. It shall be square and double to span its length and to span its breadth. And you shall set it in four rows of, sto of stones. A row of sardis, topaz, carbuncle shall be of the first row, and the second row an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row a genesis, a genesis, an agate, and an amethyst. 
and the fourth row, a beryl, an oinix, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold figlery, and there shall be twelve stones with their names according to the names of the sons of Israel. They shall be like signets, each engraved with its name for the twelve tribes. And you shall make for the breastplate twisted chains like cords of pure gold. And you shall make for the breastplate two rings of gold, and put the two rings on the two edges of the breastplate. And you shall put the two cords of gold in the two rings at the edges of the breastplate. The two ends of the two cords you shall attach, and the two settings of figlery, and so attach it in front of the shoulder pieces of the ephod. You shall make two rings of gold, and put them at the two ends of the breastplate, on its inside edge next to the ephod. And you shall make two rings of gold, and attach them in the front to the lower part of the two shoulder pieces of the ephod, as it seem above the skillfully woven band of the ephod. And they shall bind the breast piece by its rings to the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue, so that it may lie on the skillfully woven band of the ephod, so that the breast piece shall not come loose from the ephod. So Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel in the breast piece of, judge, in the breast piece of judgment on his heart when he goes into the holy place to bring them to regular remembrance before the Lord. And in the breast piece of judgment you shall put the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be on Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the people of Israel on his heart before the Lord regularly. You shall make the robe of the ephod all of blue. It shall have an opening for the head in the middle of it, with a woven binding around its opening, like the opening of a garment, so that it may not tear. On its hem you shall make pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet yarns around its hem, with bells of gold between them. A, be a golden bell and a pomegranate, and a golden bell and a pomegranate around the hem of the robe. And it shall be on Aaron when he ministers, and its sound shall be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord, and when he comes out, so that he does not die. You shall make a plate of pure gold and engrave it, like the engraving of a signet, holy to the Lord. And you shall fasten it on the turban by a cord of blue. It shall be on the front of the turban. It shall be on Aaron's forehead. And Aaron shall bear any guilt from the holy things that the people of Israel consecrate as their holy gifts. It shall be regularly on his forehead that they may be accepted before the Lord. You shall weave the coat in the checker work of fine linen, and you shall make a turban of fine linen, and you shall make a sash embroidered with needlework. For Aaron's sons, you shall make coats and sashes and caps. You shall make them for glory and beauty. And you shall put them on Aaron your brother and on his sons with them, and shall anoint them and ordain them and consecrate them, that they may serve me as priests. And you shall make for them linen undergarments to cover their naked flesh. They shall reach from the hips to their thighs, and they, sh and they shall be on Aaron and on his sons when they go into the tent of meeting, or when they come near to the altar to minister in the holy place, lest they bear guilt and die. This shall be a statute forever for him and for his offspring after him. See, God was serious concerning how he wanted the priests and the high priests to minister before him. And he wants Aaron to to be able to minister in, cer in certain ways, not just in the actions that he does, but even in the dress that he has on, because the dress that he has on is an image of the high priest high priestly role that Jesus is going to take. And so it's very important that he ministers with this in mind. He ministers with the 12 tribes of Israel on his heart. He ministers realizing that he is interceding for the sin of the people of Israel, much like Jesus intercedes for us. Now, now you and I are in a little bit different situation. We're no longer told by God that we have to dress in a certain way in order to please him. But our actions, however, are incredibly important because just as we see Aaron being, uh, uh, if you will, a picture of Jesus to the people of Israel, even though they didn't know that at the time. We are the picture of Jesus to the people around us, and God makes that very clear. As a matter of fact, if we take a look in 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21, God makes it clear how we have been changed by Christ and what that means to the world around us. Let's take a look at this together. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. 
even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All of this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You see, our calling is just as high as Aaron's calling was. He was to bear the sin before the people for forgiveness. Jesus has done that for us, but he's given us the ministry of reconciliation to go tell the world around us that they could be reconciled to God, having been forgiven on the cross because of Jesus' actions that they just believe in him. This is what sets us apart from the world around us. And while I cannot guarantee that my collared shirt will continue to be part of my preaching attire, I can guarantee you this, that my heart's desire is to be an ambassador for Christ no matter what I'm wearing and what I'm doing so that people will see Jesus in me and I can lead them to the throne of grace. I pray that that's what you want to see as well. God bless you. I hope that helps you this day. Keep your eye on Jesus and be an ambassador for Christ wherever you are. And we'll talk with you again tomorrow.